most, when most people think about landscapes, they think about the, the land, earth beneath our feet as something that's unchanging, as something sort of eternal, solid as a rock, all those kinds of um, analogies. But to a geologist like myself, thinking about soil is, is a really, it's a different kind of system. It's a very thin skin of the earth that essentially acts as the living membrane that connects geology to biology sort of a very thin crust of rotten rock, is actually what all terrestrial life is drawn from. It's what we draw our sustenance from. And this book, Dirt, the Erosion of Civilizations, I thought I was starting to write a book about the history of soil erosion. And in looking into the history of how people have treated land and society after society, what I essentially came to realize is the history of how people treat the land, and in particular farm, as I'll get into um, uh, during the lecture, really sets the longevity of human societies and influences how the land in the end can sustain human societies or not. Um, and by the end of the book, I try and draw the, um, this, this historical story back to the relevance for the next hundred years. And those of you who may have uh, you know, spent your uh, leisure reading time reading environmental history textbooks um, would, would have run across the idea that environmental influences and soil erosion resulting from deforestation in particular um, influenced the demise of ancient civilizations around the world. All those societies over there listed on the right-hand side of the screen are where people have made the case that soil erosion influenced the fate of a, of a society. And usually the argument that's made is that deforestation was the culprit. And those of you who may have seen a, uh, um, a documentary that I haven't seen yet, actually, that was aired, I think, last week, maybe the week before, dealing with uh, the landslides and soil erosion uh, in our state, uh, couple years ago now, may be surprised to hear me say this, but I don't think that deforestation could actually be to blame for the loss that influenced ancient societies. Why not? Well, if you add the rates up, even though clear-cutting does increase the rate of landsliding, and I'm sorry if that's controversial, it shouldn't be, um, <laughs> but it still doesn't pencil out to be fast enough that you could strip the wholesale, uh, wholesalely strip the soil right off of hillsides in the way that it can be shown that had happened in ancient societies. Something else must have been going on. I, I cut my geological teeth in the Oregon Coast Range um, looking at the, uh, the, the effects of, of timber management on soil erosion. And you know the brutal reality is, is that trees grow back pretty fast. And you have to keep the trees off to, to keep soil erosion proceeding at a pace where you could lose all the soil. The trick is it doesn't take that big an area of landsliding to catastrophically impact whatever's downslope. Um, but what I want to do in, in this book is to turn the sort of question on its head and ask what would be required to sustain a civilization. Think about soil and its preservation over the time scales that are relevant to a geologist. Um, what does this uh, uh, play out to be? Well, if we look at the, the reality that something like 97 percent, almost all of our food comes from the soil. The fundamental condition for sustaining a civilization is sustaining the soil. But the question I really want to ask is, could it have been the, ag the plow and not the axe that brought down ancient societies? Uh, can agricultural soil erosion have limited the lifespan of civilizations? Now, clearly, forest clearing is a precursor for agriculture in forested environments. So in that case, well, you could sort of blame everything that I'm going to be saying on deforestation. My point is it's not so simple. I think agriculture was actually the main culprit that brought down ancient societies. And this should be a troubling conclusion because we still depend fundamentally on the same agricultural methods and techniques that I think contributed to the demise of ancient societies. Now, let me be very clear that I, about some things I am not trying to say because I'm not trying to make an environmentally deterministic argument that says, um, well, in much the lines that, that certain other better selling have made in the last few years. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to say that politics, social evolution, and context are unimportant. Indeed, by the end of the talk, I hope it will be very clear that what I'm arguing is the way people treat their land, the social dimension to the problem of, so of soil erosion, is actually the key to understanding it and how it's played out in influencing ancient societies. Um, and so every civilization has a unique historical and social setting, and those specific social contexts that lead to warfare and institutional evolution and crises do affect the longevity of civilizations. I'm not arguing they don't. Secondly, I'm not arguing that climate change is unimportant to the longevity of human societies. 
Uh, the Viking colony in Greenland was a, uh, disappeared in the cold period of the Little Ice Age. That graph over there on uh, your left shows the uh, sort of mean temperatures in the northern hemisphere from about, what, 900 AD over to roughly present. And that dip during the Little Ice Age is the time when the Viking colony in Greenland essentially disappeared. Argue perhaps that that was due to their failure to adopt Inuit ways, but if you actually look, if you talk to the people at the University of Edinburgh who studied the problem, they will argue that what really happened to the Viking colony in Greenland is that they were abandoned economically during the uh, the, the cold downturn, the hard times in uh, Europe, when their Scandinavian homeland essentially, you know, cut them off as an as a um, from their economic base. Um, I'm not going to be arguing about those issues tonight, and I'm not trying to argue that climate change is not a fundamental constraint in the longevity of human societies, and I'm certainly not trying to argue that it's not one of the most important problems that we face today. And finally, I'm not trying to argue that natural disasters are unimportant. Um, clearly they are. They are. Near Mount St. Helens when it erupted in 1980, uh, it was, you know, a big deal. Um, the the uh, Minoan um, island of Santorini was a place where they built an entire city on an active volcano, and when it erupted, you know, their society was over. Um, earthquakes can influence societies. Uh, flooding can influence societies. I'm not starting the talk. Uh, there's no particular time scale to the longevity of a human society, as implied by climate change, natural disasters, or politics and social evolution, the human dimension to the problem. Yet if you look at the archaeological record through the eyes of a geologist, um, which um, you know, isn't, aren't necessarily archaeological eyes, um, but major civilizations last about 500 to 2,000 years, which to a geologist you kind of round that off to the order, order of 1,000 years or so, and you've got sort of a ballpark for the longevity of human societies. Why would that be? Why would most major civilizations, and there's a few key exceptions I could talk about, and if I don't, they'll probably come up in the questions, um, but there's, there's good reasons, it turns out, I think, to look at the problem of soil erosion as perhaps the problem that sets the time scale on which all these other phenomena play out to limit the longevity of human societies. That is sort of the underlying thesis and argument that I, make in, that I try to make in the book. And so a lot of the book is trying to basically explore that, evaluate whether or not it is a reasonable idea, and present some of the data, or the, the, uh, the, the publisher wouldn't actually let me put any data in the book. You can't, apparently you can't put like an XY plot with a graph and data on it in a popular book. Um, <laughs> go figure. They'd let me put maps in and photographs, but they said no data, no plots. Um, I had to put that in the PNAS, but the, the, it's all cited in the book at the back of it in the notes if anyone's interested. Um, but the key thing is that there's recent archaeological studies for the past couple decades that showed that soil erosion played a role in the demise of ancient civilizations, ranging from Neolithic, classical Greece, Rome, the southern United States, Central America. The list actually goes on, um, and I tried to deal with most societies where there was good evidence for that in the book, but I even had to leave a few out because um, you know I did not want to write a tome. Uh, but the point is that pe when people have done the coupled geological and archaeological work in the same landscape over the last few decades, there's been pretty solid evidence that's come together, and I'll show you a little bit of it, um, that there was a, that soil erosion did really occur at a t uh, in conjunction with ancient societies. And the key question, of course, is how big a difference did it make? Did it did soil erosion influence their longevity, or did it just come along for the ride and something else to do the do um, ancient societies in? Before we try and tackle that question, let me ask you to think like a geologist for a few minutes about dirt, about soil. Um, because someone like me thinks about it kind of like that horrible uh, figure over there that I took from one of our journal papers. And what it basically illustrates is the, pro the way a geologist, a geomorphologist, would think about soil. It's a system, much like your bank account. Ro rocks um, rot, they weather and turn into soil, and when they mix with organic matter, dead stuff and living things, that together makes soil. So you can think about soil as forming at a rate that we can try, we can understand as a function of various geological processes, but it also is lost through erosion. If you're on any kind of a sloping surface, anything but, the, but a perfectly flat parking lot, uh, moving down slope as, as geologists walk across it and kick stones, as trees fall over, as worms move stuff, things are biased down slope because simply gravity works. Um, and so if, if you think of soil as a system that's made and eroded, the thickness of the soil that you find out in a natural